capsule. Your camera. <laughs> Dylan. <laughs> That's not, I was actually testing your photographic skills. That's not a photographer back there, Dylan Perry. <laughs> I wonder why I could video. <laughs> see you <everywhere>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Let's get started with some introductions, right? Okay, you good? I'm good. That's cool. Um, some introductions. I'm Connor Evans. I'm a senior here at Moon High School, and my senior project involves teenage drug abuse. So I shadowed a pharmacist, and now I put together this presentation for you guys at GNO to talk about the issue of teenage drug abuse. And Jason. Uh, my name is Jason Taylor. I am. Uh, I've been speaking at the girls' night out for about eight years now. Don't know if any of the young ladies who are juniors or seniors work and have ever heard me speak, but uh, I have been speaking for about eight years now. Um, uh, I usually give a little bit of a background of where I'm come from and uh, you know why I'm here. Um, I'm a, got a uh, criminal justice degree from uh, California University. I worked in the uh, drug and alcohol field for about 10 years now as a drug and alcohol therapist, um, and also I am a recovering drug addict and alcoholic. Uh, I've been clean for 10 years now, uh, so I give you a little bit about where I come from, what happened, you know, uh, and go from there. Uh, the, the, real, the last point that I like to try to make before my turn over to Connor is, is uh, you know, the reason why I like to come here and start speaking to you young ladies is because, believe it or not, my problem started when I was just a little older than most of the people in this room, okay? I was 21 years old when I got clean. So I, I had done some damage up to that point. Um, so you know, it really touches home for me to come here and start speaking to you young ladies because we don't think that the decisions we make today is going to affect us tomorrow, and uh, it does. But I'm going to turn let him do his thing. Jason's got a great story to tell you later, but first we're going to talk about my stuff, which is teenage drug and alcohol abuse. <laughs> you might be wondering why I came here. Well, I think that Gino is a great event for all of you. And really, this is the age where teenage drug abuse can really take its grass, grassroots hold. So it's really important to talk to you guys now about the issue of teenage drug abuse. You get that? All right. So we go to the fundamental question, why? Why do people succumb to teenage drug abuse? Well, there's a bunch of reasons, as you can tell by that lovely photo I have right over here. Uh, a bunch of things, such as anger. They might be angry at something. They might be angry at their friends, their parents, and they look for something to hold on to, i.e., the drugs. And they might feel sorry for themselves. They might have a lot of stress, a lot of homework. They need to deal with that. So what's a stress reducer? They might go to cough syrup or some other drug to relieve that stress. And the biggest issue of all, which we'll talk about later, is poor self-image. They might not think they're pretty enough, or smart enough, or just fit in with their friends. They need to feel like they need to take some kind of drug to fit in with their friends who also take that drug which is just bad news in general. So we're going to start off with tobacco. This might be a little bit graphic. I'm sorry if that's a little graphic for you. But tobacco, you've all seen the PowerPoints in health class about tobacco, emphysema, lung cancer, all the different side effects that can go with that. And tobacco really is just super bad. You got smoking tobacco, the one you smoke, it can go in your lungs, which is horrible. That's just from smoking tobacco right there. You don't even know what your mouth looks like after you're chewing tobacco or dipping. And as you can see here, healthy lung tissue over here, very pink, very red. You can breathe with that. This over here, it hardly expands at all. You can hardly breathe. And my dad's a respiratory therapist, so he sees people who've been smoking for 30, 40 years, and they just spend the rest of their lives lying in beds on a ventilator, not doing anything. They can't even speak. They only breathe through a hole in their mouth or through a ventilator, like I just said. Next up we have alcohol, which is very prevalent if you go to college. There'll be a lot of parties, a lot of alcohol. And even some high school parties, sometimes they go to their parents' stash and find alcohol. And there's just so many bad things that can go with alcohol. First of all, your drugs will your, your drugs, your grades will suffer as a result of that. Because it won't be gra it won't be immediate, it'll be very gradual. Over a couple of nine weeks you'll see, oh my grades are slipping and slipping. Why? Because the alcohol is killing your brain cells, in fact. And there's just so many bad things. A huge laundry list that can go with alcohol woes. So many types of cancers all the way to social effects where you might think you're fitting in with your friends at first, but eventually you start to go away from that, start to be very alone, even more alone than when you started speaking. Uh, 
Uh, this is the main focus of my project, which is prescription drugs that you can see over here, prescription drug abuse, which is why I shot out the pharmacist at Walgreens for that. You can't just go in your parents' cabinet and grab whatever drug you find and you think, oh, it says it'll make you feel better, and anti-pain, so I'm going to take that and not feel better, whether in your head or physically. It doesn't work like that for two reasons. One, because you're taking the drug away from your parents, and they might need it, or your siblings, because they need that drug just to survive. And two, you don't know what that drug's going to do to you specifically. They might have needed that for their condition, but if you take that, anything could happen to you. So prescription drugs is a huge no-no. They include Sudafed or Robitussin or anything that might give you some kind of small high that you might crave. And the worst thing about this slide right here is the homemade stimulants, which is anything you can make at home. You might put glue in a bag and just sniff it. That's just huge bad news. You don't even know what's going to happen with that. You could die instantly from stuff like that. And there's so many undesired effects that you just don't want at all. All right, we're going to show you a video now. Um, it's called, it's a, that's the next slide, but it's a, it's a, sorry, this, this um, show you some startling statistics about prescription drugs. And pull that up. <coughs> it's the third tab. tab. Okay. Uh, F4. <laughs> F4? Yeah, and uh, duplicate on the right hand side. There we go. You were on the video path. This is what we did. Sorry. About that. I apologize, everyone. <laughs> Okay. The left hand side shows obviously their normal size back when they before they did drugs. 
And afterwards, just look, you can see the hair is messed up, bruises, bleeding. There's so many things that can go wrong when you start taking drugs, especially the hard drugs like meth, heroin, cocaine. It's just bad news bears. And it really is a conscious decision. It's a conscious decision to whether you want to trade your life for that or to be healthy and clean. As well as there may be social and emotional effects, such as you might have taken drugs already just because you were lonely, or because you wanted to have more friends. Well, in the end, you're going to end up lonely and having no friends anyway, whether it be in an addiction treatment center or just alone on the street trying to beg for more drugs, just as bad news in general. Alright, we have another video. It's kind of catchy. The music's catchy. But it tells, teens are telling you their stories, and uh, I think you like it more than the other one. I did to have control to do whatever I wanted. I really didn't want to listen to anybody. I just did it for popularity, and I just wanted to fit in pretty much uh, with all, everybody else. I just didn't care. Not the fact that I wanted to fit in because that was never a problem for me. It's that I didn't really get the love that I was looking for. was really good in school. I was a perfectionist, really independent. Um, always had to do everything on my own. You know, I always knew right in the back of my mind I was doing the wrong thing, but I would do it anyway. I felt like I was fitting in with people and I just felt like I was having fun. Oh, I was hiding from my past, the things from my childhood, the way I was feeling. High school, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know where I fit in. Yeah, I don't really remember much of it. All I do is remember playing sports and just doing the drugs. I always was a very anxious person growing up, very nervous. I thought that I could manage it. I just thought that I was going to be able to keep it under control. I looked at other people and I was like, wow, I would never be like that. I first started using drugs when I was in eighth grade, 13 years old. My freshman year in high school, 14 years old. My junior year, 11. See, around 13, I began using drugs, hanging out with the wrong crowd. It was a normal thing. Everybody drinks alcohol. I thought, well, it's just smoking one bowl of weed. And I didn't believe when they said, oh, well, weed is a gateway drug. Weed is nothing, you know, it doesn't even do anything. Well, then that led me into a cocaine addiction and then a heroin addiction. I got an escape from drugs. It was fun, and at the same time, I had nothing to worry about. Meth took a lot of my past pain away, and I just, I used it to cope. I thought, I'm never going to smoke weed. One day I did, then I did coke, and then I did meth, and each step just led me a little bit.